I'm Bella, the Maker Mama Boss Lady behind Fiber and Fox, and this is episode 34 of my podcast. I'm a crochet designer. I knit a little bit. No, I did not knit this sweater. So let's get that out of the way. <laughs> Everything you need to know about me can be found down below this video, and there are usually show notes on the blog. I don't know if I'm going to get to them on the blog this week, but if not, I will put all links that you need to know down below the video as well. So welcome. Thanks for coming. Uh, normally I do a bit of admin at the beginning. I don't have a ton. I always say I don't have a ton admin wise. It's kind of my catchphrase now, I think. Um, but admin wise, I just wanted to let you guys know that I am working on all of the i91 shop hop vlogs. Uh, if you didn't hear all about that jump back one video, but basically um, there's a shop hop or like a yarn crawl that happens in my area in it's happening in August this year. I believe the 10th through the 21st and a couple different podcasters are going ahead of the shop hop um, trail and doing little tours and interviews with all of the shops so I'm gonna have nine vlogs up of all of those shops from New Haven Connecticut up to Putney Vermont um, and I believe that I'm gonna start releasing them Friday July 30th I think it is um, so keep an eye out on the channel. I'm going to release them. Normally I release stuff once a week, but for that week, um, since the shop hop starts August 10th, I'm probably going to do one just about every day, maybe not on the weekends or Sunday or something like that. I haven't quite figured it out yet, but I'm like halfway through filming and editing those. So I'm going to get the next couple done in the next few weeks. And I'm so excited to put those out to you, whether you're local um, or you just want to kind of follow along for the sake of yarn camaraderie, camaraderie, um, I would invite you to check those out because vlogs are always super fun and there's going to be great little interviews with all the shop owners as well. So that's, those are my admin bits. Up next, we usually talk designs and I actually have a design release this time. I don't have much to report on the cardigan. I did seam it together and I'm still working on the sleeves. So I'm not going to bother showing you. You can jump back one or two episodes. I really need to work on stop doing this cat swipe thing that I do, but you're here for me and that's who I am. So like, follow, subscribe, all that. Uh, <laughs> Grain Bojal. It's out. If you didn't catch the pattern drop video already, there is a pattern drop video telling you all about this pattern, everything that you need to know, but it's fingering weight. It uses mini skeins. It's gorgeous. It's, a, it's asymmetrical, uh, boomerang type shawl. Do, 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 do. I won't go over too many details here because there is a nice quick little pattern drop video, uh, from last week as well, but yeah, it's got everything you need to know. It's lovely. It's beautiful. I love it. And my daughter, who's like two and a half saw me wearing it and she was like can you make me a matching shawl and put it in a box with tape on it for a present and I was like you still my heart absolutely I can um so yeah she wants shawls for her birthday which is in November so I can get started on that um but I think it's really I don't think three-year-olds really wear shawls but apparently she's going to so I'm very very excited about that situation um so yes I have to I don't have any or enough yarn left over to make an exact replica, but I'm going to make some sort of no pattern coming, but miniified version of a rainbow shawl for her. And then she wants a daytime blue shawl because daytime blue is her favorite color. It sounds like a cram box color, right? Um, when asked what her favorite color was, she was like daytime blue. And we're like, oh, what's daytime blue? She's like, oh, not, not very dark blue, just a daytime blue. And I think that's a brilliant, should be a paint color or a crayon or something. So daytime blue shawl coming right up. That's all I got design-wise for right now. Like I said, the cardigan is in the works, still doesn't have a name. I'm not gonna show it to you until I at least get sleeves and hopefully ribbing and some buttons on it. So it is coming, but it'll probably be finished finished at the end of summer, maybe. Garment design in fingering weight yarn. Welcome to my design section. finished object wise. I technically have two finished objects, but can only show you one live on video live. Um, I'm going to put in footage of the other thing that I finished. I had been working on a baby blanket for a family member and the shower and whatnot has come and gone. So I shipped that out. Um, but I'll put in some video here, I guess, or pictures or something. I'll insert something. You'll see it. Um, but it was no pattern, just a basic worsted weight, like bobble striped. I used some Hobby Lobby yarn and yeah, just made a really sweet, uh, they weren't finding out the gender of the baby and this is their seventh child. So they definitely have enough baby blankets, but I wanted this one to be extra special. So, uh, yes, made a baby blanket, 
you're wondering why you're having a, a shower for your seventh child, I mean, you need to know them in person. It's a whole story and it's really incredible and amazing. So very excited to be gifting that. Uh, so baby blanket, doo -doo -doo -doo. you saw it from Bella in the past. Um, but Bella in the present has two finished socks. Why am I showing you this way? There we go. Um, no pattern on this either. I'm just kind of, you know, feeling it. When I'm, when I'm working on a big design, uh, or any design really, I like to have projects where I'm winging it or not following a pattern or not thinking too much. Um, so these socks were that. Um, uh, made it up and they're not, they're not identical because I couldn't quite remember. <laughs> I messed it up a couple times. I think I was doing like three and then two rows and then some I was doing four and then one, but you know, you can't really tell. They read similar, right? Um, so this was some yarn that I had left over scrap from a sweater, uh, quantity, a small sweater quantity that I dyed with avocado pits and skins for my daughter. And then this main color is Megs and Co. I Could Live in Hope, which were both just scrap. And yeah, so I did a little textured alternating rib situation there. Uh, standard heel flap and gusset, stockinette foot, kind of an extra long toe. And yeah, they're fun. I already have one pair of socks out of I Could Live in Hope, but I, I generally take all of my yarn skeins and use them at least if for socks. If I buy them for socks, I'll make two, if not three pairs involving that yarn. So I don't really mind having uh, duplicates. They're not the same sock. I'll make a different pattern, but I know some people can't stand using the yarn again. Unless it's a yarn that I really hate. Generally, I use up all of the yarn and then the bits left go into the scrap in there. So uh, yeah. By the time I do my 2021 sock box of socks video, there's going to be a lot of repeat colors, but it's my socks, my feet, my closet, my knits. Deal with it. Those are my finished objects for this week. For whips, I only have one right now. I cast on finally. I don't remember if I've talked about it on the podcast wanting to make it, but I've talked about it several times in the vlogs that I've been filming. Um, so cast on. Spoiler alert for when you're watching the vlogs in the future, I did in fact make the, what is it, St I always say it wrong, staple, I didn't print the cover page, staple linen tank, linen staple tank, something by Hokey Locatelli, Hokey, this is what I put it on the screen anyway, staple linen tank, I believe is what it's called, printed the black and white version of the pattern here, um, but yeah, it is a basic staple linen tank top and I'm using yarn that I got at Margie's yarn no lies you and you in Windsor you've heard me talk about them for sure um, so that vlog is going to be coming up in the beginning of August but I grabbed when I was there doing the interview some Fibra Natura which is a yarn by Universal I think yes Universal Yarns and the line is Lena and it's 68% linen 32% cotton That's not showing up right. Also, in regards to this whole situation, I am looking at um, other vlogging cameras. I know the audio is not the best um, off of this camera, being my phone. Um, and yes, I'm trying to get a better setup and a better just whole situation. I know my phone doesn't do the best audio and I'm sure the video quality and just everything could be improved in the methods of as far as us like editing. It has a lot of to do a lot of extra conversions and fancy stuff that my husband has mostly been in charge of because um, he understands that a little bit more than I do. But uh, yes, we are working on getting an updated situation. I'm just really overwhelmed by committing to a very expensive camera. Um, it's in the it's in the business budget, but I want to make sure I make a good decision. So bear with me. Put your headphones in. I'm sorry if the audio is not top top notch. We're gonna get it there. Thank you for loving me. This has been a public service announcement. Back to the tank top. Um, so I cast it on. It has a very interesting construction. I feel like I can talk about it without telling you um, anything that's going to give it away. It is a paid for pattern. Um, but, ooh, there's just strings coming out everywhere here. So to start it, you cast on each of these little back shoulder bits. And then, so you work like one shoulder bit and then the other shoulder bit, and then you like added stitches in between. 
cast on the back and then it like down to the armholes and then picked up and cast on the front. Oh wait, was I showing the front? Yeah, this is the front. And cast on the front and then knit down to like the armholes and then connected the two and worked in the round, which is a really interesting construction. I think it's fairly common as far as um, stuff that's knit in like one piece, but I've never, never done it. Um, so it was interesting. And I, I mostly executed it correctly. There's a couple, I did like one wrap and turn backwards here and there's definitely a couple mistakes here and there. Um, I really like the idea of this pattern. It's just a really basic tank top. It is sport weight yarn. Um, and it's got this, I thought it was drop stitches originally, but it's not, it's actually more like a rib situation down the center here. Um, nothing too fiddly, nothing too complicated, really like, like she says, staple basic, um, tank. But that being said, other than the beginning, like cast on bits and figuring out the top, it's kind of not the most engaging knit. Um, and having to do the top, I mean, you always do, uh, like the top of a sweater, usually knit flat because unless you're steaking, you need armholes. So you have to knit it flat. Um, or doing a raglan or a yoke, obviously, but um, for this sort of tank top situation. So having to knit the top flat and then um, join in the round to work down, I don't know. I didn't love it. I think I would prefer to knit the bottom in the round and then split and do the top, uh, just interest-wise, because it was kind of a pain doing these little fiddly bits first and then having to work flat for such a long time. I don't love purling. Um, so that was kind of just vexing. <laughs> It's, it's not a bad pattern. I just didn't really love that aspect of it. Um, but also this yarn isn't the most engaging thing. It's lovely. And I'm going to be so excited to have this staple gray basic, like, like layering piece in my wardrobe. I'm really happy with the yarn choice. I think the color is called Sterling or Platinum. I didn't tell you. Sterling. Um, but yeah, it's not the most fascinating thing to knit with. It's like solid gray yarn. Um, so I am getting a little bit like just kind of over it, but I'm also glad that I'm not knitting it in something more exciting, like a speckly or variegated, because I wouldn't, it then wouldn't be the staple piece that I want it to be. So I'm going to be very happy when it's done, but for right now, it's kind of dull, <laughs> not going to lie. Um, and also I, part of it's my execution of it. But also, like, if you look at the pattern I, or the pattern photos on Hohi, I feel like the neckline is just kind of weird. Like, you can see it sort of just doesn't look super polished. So you end up, like, casting on because you've worked just little shoulder bands. Um, yeah, I guess we can call them shoulder bands. You end up casting on the front and the back stitches. And I just, I don't maybe it's my cast on style, but... Um, between the short rows and the cast on, it's just like this particular and right here, just doesn't look neat. And you're going to pick it up later and do, I think just some regular stockinette around the edge. I may do an I cord just to make it really polished. And I think I'm definitely going to I cord the arm holes as well. Cause they just want to roll. I don't think there's anything in the pattern about finishing off the arm holes, but they're just going to want to curl up on themselves, which I'm not sure is a design element that I really desire. But I just feel like the neckline just kind of looks messy. Like, I like cut off a collar or something, which, you know, I didn't. Followed it to pattern, but we'll see how that goes. But yes, I'm very excited to have it done. I have, oh, I should have measured, but that's probably what, five, five-ish inches there. And I think I need to do 10, maybe it's 10 centimeters. I don't remember. Point is, I have a ways to go on full body length because it's only hitting my rib cage at this point. And I might crop it a little bit. Linen and cotton is going to grow a tad, um, but I think the measurements and pattern are written for linen or cotton. So it's pretty accurate as far as it's going to grow. I did not gauge swatch on this. I usually do, but we went away to my parents' uh, cabin in Vermont over last week recently. Um, and I wanted to cast it on there, but I didn't have time to swatch beforehand. And then also the cabin has no electricity. So casting it on in the um, like lantern lit cabin in this gray yarn and trying to figure out this new powder was probably not my best life choice. So that also kind of set me off to a bad start. But overall, <laughs> I do like this pattern <laughs> and I'm very excited to have it because I've been talking about it for a long time. So I think with blocking and finishing and all of that, it's going to be fine. But 
I don't know, I'll give you my full review when it's done. But I'm excited to get that done and to cast on another summer type project. Um, I probably should have started my summer projects earlier as it's mid-July now. It's not mid-July, it's like the first week of July. It's like July 5th or something right now. <laughs> but I'm gonna cast on in this other yarn that I also got, and I think I showed you last week, from No Ho Wools. I've been to so many yard shops lately, guys, that's amazing. No Ho Wools, uh, I think I'm gonna cast on a Mount Pleasant by Pippin Pin, which is kind of similar to the Tenya top that I made uh, with the lacy bottom. Um, but that being said, this is also a solid yarn. It's definitely a color that I very much so love, but um, I think the lace will keep me interested, but the body might get a little bit boring because solid yarn, it's not even tonal. I don't know. I think I'm going to love it, but it's only, it's only a t-shirt, so it's not like a huge life commitment or anything. Um, but yeah, I'm going to cast that on next, and I think I am, I decided, I talked about last time, I think I'm going to do the purple and the, the greenish beige-ish for the uh, elf mail. But I decided I wait until closer to fall to cast that on because it is long sleeve. So if I cast it on and get it done in like a, m a month, um, it'll still be too warm to wear. So hold off on the elf mail and I'll make a Mount Pleasant instead. That is about all I have this week. This is a really short one, like really short. Um, but I wanted to just check in with you guys. I like to try to stay consistent if I can. And yeah, let me know what you're working on. If you're doing summer projects or getting ready for fall, or if you've made any of these patterns, if you have any recommendations for fun summer patterns, I really need to focus on getting that cardigan finished, but we've been doing like little mini vacations and trips and stuff. And my daughter doesn't nap anymore, which has been an interesting plot twist for during the day, trying to get stuff done. So I haven't been getting much pattern writing done at night because I've been vlog editing at night. So I don't have to explain myself to you. This is my business in my life, but <laughs> I just feel like, I don't know, I hold myself to probably too high of a expectation and standard and have to constantly remind myself that it's okay to just be the mama and everything else can wait. Um, but thank you for being here and supporting my crochet design journey. And if you already checked out the rainbow shawl and have grabbed it, I really appreciate it. There's lots of info in that pattern drop video as far as kits and where you can get yarn for it and all that gloriousness. Go check that out. And I will catch you guys soon. I think there'll be one more podcast episode before I start putting out the vlogs. But if not, make sure you mark your calendars for the end of July and get ready to follow along on the shop hop trail with me. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks.